All right, so Greg, today we're going to talk about uh, biology and the just amazing impact it can have on plants in your garden. But I think before we get right into how it impacts your garden, we really need to consider the bigger picture. And a lot of that relates to ecosystems. And I know that a lot of people watching this video are going to understand ecosystems, a lot of times thing, things that you can see, right? Um, they're very visible. Um, but what we want to focus on is an ecosystem that's actually invisible and underneath our feet. Yeah, whenever I'm thinking about bringing you know, ecological services into the garden or into the grow room, it's always good to have a good understanding of why that is. It's just not randomly grabbing some kind of biology and throwing it in, but it's going back and fully understanding how species co-evolve together, yeah. right? And as you mentioned, we are quite aware of kind of ecology above the ground, you know, we see plants and animals and, and I think most people have a basic understanding of how they've interacted and co-evolved over time to fill different niches. But there's a far more biological diversity and more species uh, beneath our feet in the soil. And generally people kind of disregard soil. We've maybe learned in school about um, different trophic levels and you know decomposers are in the soil in the form of bacteria and, and fungi but to really understand all the complexity and diversity in the soil and how you know we often focus on pathogenic species but there's far more beneficial species in the soil um, that are all working together for kind of a, a common goal whether that's intentional or not uh, it's all about um, you know, serving the needs of each organism. And so when we want to, you know, all of these, all the plants that we grow, all of our food crops, you know, they all come from wild plants, right? And millions of years of, of you know, kind of feedback systems and finding their place. And, and so when we, you know, we have a garden that we manage as humans or we have a grow room, those are very kind of synthetic artificial situations. And I think we only, you know, even the best scientists still only have kind of a cursory understanding of the full depth of uh, ecological interactions, right? So in order to bring those into our gardens and get the benefit out of it, um, I guess, you know, traditionally agriculture kind of took a turn where we just viewed, you know, soil as a medium for anchoring roots and, and holding water and nutrients. Um, we're now really understanding all these other benefits and you know in, in the grow room and in potted culture now there's there's a huge uh, shift and an emphasis on living soils and and bringing in some of those ecological services to either uh, increase nutrient uptake uh, or nutrient availability, um, drought tolerance, um, immune response you know there's all kinds of benefits that we can get from uh, utilizing biology. Sure, and I think like, you know, in terms of that ecosystem and all that complexity you've mentioned, I mean, something that people are familiar with living soil and maybe not even familiar with that topic, mm -hmm. um, you know, would understand maybe the soil food web. Um, so if people have heard about the soil food web, that's exactly what it's referring to is those different levels like you've suggested with the bacteria, the fungi, the protozoa, a little bit of everything and how those are all interacting together. Um, so, you know, part of the reason to bring biology into this system, like you said, is because these container-based systems are really sort of inert. And it's really important to understand that foundation that plants have with all the organisms. I think that something within that plant biology interaction that's super important is the rhizosphere. And, um, you know, the rhizosphere is, um, you know, basically that zone where biology and plants really meet in, like, sort of that intense sort of dance that they have together and so much can happen in that space. Mm -hmm, certainly. You know what I found really interesting in studying soils is you know um, this focus on all the biology and all the amazing life that's in the soil is actually a lot of soils can kind of be like a desert um, with oases and those oases can be the rhizosphere right so you can get these kind of dead areas in the soil um, and then you get right around the root, that, that very thin band, uh, where you get this intense biological activity. 
And it doesn't mean that in other areas there aren't biology doing, but there just tends to be a lot of available resources. Just like an oasis in the desert supplies water to allow plants and animals to flourish in that environment, uh, the same is in the rhizosphere of the plant. And that's because the plant is excreting compounds that, exactly. that are either food for fungi or bacteria, or you know, they're stimulatory compounds or some sort of benefit, right? And plants will actually excrete specific compounds to attract specific organisms to serve a function that is missing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is the really interesting thing, right, is that plants are trying to control their environment to a certain extent. If they need a specific type of help, they're going to send out certain signals to actually attract those things that are going to help them the most. And not just plants are doing that too, right? Like the bacteria and the fungi, they're also signaling, you know, so there's this, we could call it chemical communication in a sense, right, by excreting compounds and yeah, I mean, I think the fascinating thing is really that how intricate this system can be once you start looking at it and really observing what's happening in that zone. You're right. I mean, there's so much intense activity happening and there's so many different transactions. I mean, I don't want to make it seem like a, a, a business proposal, mm -hmm. but I mean, really, that is what's happening. Plants and other organisms are making decisions together about how much they want to work together in that given environment. So it is a really sort of interesting, uh, you know, area to study and I mean these types of relationships go all the way back I mean you know you can look at plants coming out of the ocean where still the majority of plants actually live um, but coming out of the ocean and coming onto that rocky sort of thing that was to be earth uh, in the end and you know immediately they found fungi and started that relationship together yeah you're right because I, I believe originally there wasn't really much in the way of soil Right. Soil takes a long time to evolve, um, so you know plants were colonizing on, when they first came onto land, rocks and different things. Well, exactly. obviously it's hard to pry nutrients out of rocks, right? So by forming these kind of relationships with, with fungi that can actually solubilize rock and dissolve it and then absorb the nutrients and, and do an exchange with the plants, there was a... A good mutual relationship. Yeah, and I, I think that something, you know, because that's sort of abstract going back hundreds of millions of years, but I mean, if anyone's been on a, a hike recently, I mean, if you see lichen growing on rock, you're seeing that initial relationship still happening today on that rocky surface, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's really, really interesting. And so the key for gardeners, I guess, in this whole uh, equation is to try and figure out how to take these just infinitely complex relationships and take advantage of them in the garden. Um, you know, there's going to be a, a lot of ways that a garden can benefit from biology, but you know, from your perspective, Greg, what do you think some of the, the key reasons to bring biology into the garden might be? Resilience. To me, it all comes down to creating a resilient growing system, right? And and that resiliency comes through comes from a degree of complexity, I believe, right? If we oversimplify things, just as you know, if you go to the, the prairies, uh, you'll see, you know, wide swaths of the same crop. Well, farmers are constantly battling nutrient deficiencies, um, pest and disease infestations, right? Because that's an overly simplified system. And it's leaving a lot of what, we, what is really an ecological niche open for an organism to come and fill. Right, so in our own gardens, I think it, by create, we can create resiliency by trying to fill the ecological niches to the best of our ability, right? As I said, even the best growers, even the best scientists, we're still learning. We still have a very limited view on all of these interactions and in, that, that take place in nature. Um, but by <clears throat> bringing the biology into your own garden, you can start to fill these niches. You know, so, you know, again, to help improve the turnover of nutrients in the soil, but also if you've got beneficial bacteria and fungi living in these places, it makes it harder for pathogenic species to find their place, right? Um, and also a lot of these beneficial species may, like penicillin, for example, was um, isolated from the soil, right? And, and it has a similar uh, antibacterial properties in the soil, right? Um, so, you know, it, what is it called? Systemic immune response in plants yeah. and certain bacteria and fungi can help to stimulate uh, immunity in plants. Um, so, you know, it's, 
by bringing that biology in, you're creating a more stable system. Sure. Right? Yeah, I mean, that resilience is critical. And I think that the resilience comes from overall soil health by filling those niches, like you've suggested. Um, you know, I think also, too, you know, there's, a, there's an aspect of quality as well for the plants that are grown in systems that use biology, right? I mean, you can actually, uh, you know, enhance certain properties. Um, you can, through the mineralization of the soil, actually get a better nutrient profile in plants, you know, improving, you know, how healthy they are for you to eat. Um, it's very clear, like you said, I mean, you know, we almost have a barren wasteland in a lot of growing systems that we use where we're really trying to keep things as simple as possible because simplicity is generally a very good thing for us. It's easy to understand. But the problem is, is that the soil ecosystem is just so infinitely complex. I mean, you got, you know, in a handful of soil, you might have as many organisms as you have people on the planet, mm -hmm. right, in healthy soil. And so, you know, I think that's what you're getting at is that resilience um, is just really, it's all about that diversity in the soil as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it also, it, it helps with regulation as well. Like you mentioned, you get a better nutrient profile when you're bringing the biology in, but it also helps plants regulate nutrient uptake as well and to buffer uh, some of the negative consequences of either an undersupply or an oversupply of nutrients, um, improving drought tolerance. You know, we know mycorrhizal fungi, not only do they help with nutrient uptake, but they effectively expand um, the foraging network of a plant's roots and also helps with drought tolerance because it's able to access water out of the reach of, of individual roots. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's no question that biology and building a diverse system around your plant roots is, is going to enhance your productivity, um, you know, and, and really get that plant to achieve maximum yield. Um, and I think, you know, we're going to need a, a couple of other talks to talk about things like, uh, you know, bacteria, fungi, some of the big functional groups, and within those groups, how many different types of help you can actually get. Um, so I'm really looking forward to digging into some of those topics. Yeah, so am I. It's going to be an exciting time. Yeah.